Hello, my name is Veronica Winters and uh, today I'd like to talk about art collecting and um, if you are a beginner I'm gonna mention several things you need to pay attention to uh, to make a, a worthwhile purchase. <laughs> Well, we all know that art collecting is a wild west, right? I mean, let's not talk about the banana thing that happened at Art Basel uh, this winter. I think it's always uh, quite puzzling and frustrating to see uh, some childish scribbles uh, worth a lot more than a really nice and beautiful painting. I'm not here to critique any uh, particular artwork. I, I'd rather focus on some fundamentals and what to look for uh, when uh, considering purchasing art. And then um, eventually you just grow your sense of aesthetics and um, you become a much better art collector by uh, knowing what to look for and actually seeing uh, really good art you know you would be able to appreciate it a lot more um, once you uh, develop your sense of personal aesthetic. I also want to discuss uh, the value of collecting art prints. Let's begin. There are many reasons why uh, people collect art. Um, it can be, a, you know, speculation, status, or the love of art. I often uh, see uh, people who collect uh, American fine art simply because they love painting and uh, want to support uh, the artist. And uh, usually they love uh, discovering new artists following their careers, getting to know them. Uh, that's why if you're an artist and watching this video, please know that your art collectors want to be involved and need to uh, see the updates about your uh, art shows and new artwork. If you are new to art collecting, you need to decide what your goal is. If it's investment and speculation, you are going to uh, pick art following that goal. But if you would like to build up uh, the collection of art uh, that you are passionate about and uh, it's not just the investment for you, you're gonna stick to that goal and develop a collection uh, this way. It doesn't mean that you can have both goals, uh, but usually if you want to buy art as an investment, um, you need to stick to certain artists. I would consider artists that um, hang in every major you know, art museum and uh, I would also look into the corporate uh, art collections to see what they have. Also, I think if you're into contemporary art, it would be harder to make a choice because there is not enough uh, track record to know uh, for sure that 
your investment would pay off. Although uh, there are a number of artists uh, that are wonderful and uh, they are collected and uh, I know that by buying those artists you are making investment that will uh, pay off in the future. Um, you probably need to check pricing um, at the auction houses like Christie's or Sotheby's and um, also stick to blue chip art galleries selling, um, let's say, modern art. Uh, you want to do this to minimize cheating um, and just to make sure that what you are buying is the real thing. Well, she took my place. Right, Kitty, right. So, how to start art collecting? Uh, first thing is uh, to collect what uh, touches your heart, what touches your soul. Collect art that you want to look at, that you find inspiring, beautiful. You know, it might remind you of uh, certain memories. Um, collect something that speaks to you. So study art history and um, just figure out what you like, like what uh, period of art um, is important to you, like uh, you need to feel the connection, is it the 16th century, is it the 17th, you know, 19th century romanticism or uh, the Impressionists or contemporary art, just figure it out on your own so you can focus your collection on a particular time period that speaks to you and basically uh, shows who you are. I think it's always great to see a collection that uh, ties in in some way um, because it could tie in in the time period, it, it could tie in in uh, the subject matter um, or even in color. Um, those are things that you keep figuring out as you go out uh, to the museums, uh, see art shows and uh, talk to professionals. Um, make connections with art galleries and artists and just keep in touch um, developing your um, uh, personal sense of style. I think it's super important to edu educate yourself in art history and uh, major art movements and uh, even contemporary art, uh, just uh, to know what main names are. So if you solely rely on art advisors and uh, art brokers or you know gallery, you might be making a mistake if you just rely on art advisors or gallery direct, uh, directors because they uh, have their own interests in mind and uh, it's great when uh, those interests work for you 100% but I think it's, uh, it's invaluable to, to understand major art movements uh, and uh, understand what you like uh, to make uh, great purchases. Because otherwise you rely on someone else's knowledge, someone else's taste, and um, you are the one who is going to live with your art uh, in your space. 
uh, that's why I think it's uh, important to uh, buy something that you like to look at. It's very good to know uh, the opinions of uh, professionals, what they think about a particular artwork, um, but the final decision uh, of making uh, a purchase should be yours. I think a uh, great uh, art uh, has a message. Um, this message um, is expressed in a very beautiful way. If you are into abstract art, uh, I think it's also important to buy uh, abstractions that uh, are beautiful visually as well. Be on the mail list of uh, galleries that you like, art dealers and um, artists as well. Have studio visits uh, to learn about arts and how um, painting gets created, um, going from ideas to you know the technical aspects of it. Also, attend uh, receptions at uh, galleries and auction houses uh, to meet your fellow art collectors and to learn more about art and artists. Uh, make connections with those people who interest you. Know the artist um, you are purchasing from. Uh, it's best to know the artist personally. Um, because I think art grows on you even more when you learn about the story behind every artwork or the fact why artists paint. I think when you're aware of those things, every artwork um, grows on you even more and you develop um, even deeper connection to uh, painting and uh, the subject, an artist himself or herself. Also, if you if you are clear on art collecting as an investment, do pricing research. Um, a lot of times, it's uh, obscure. If a particular artist is really famous, you won't see clear pricing. And so you have to search for past sales uh, to see uh, the price range. Also, I think it's acceptable to negotiate the price above uh, 10,000. I don't know what your means are, but let's say if you buy art under 5,000, it's better not to negotiate the pricing because it barely pays the artist and the gallery for you know everything that's involved with the production and sale of the art but if you if you are willing to uh, develop the collection with art that that's worth above uh, 10,000 um, you have a room uh, to negotiate pricing also, when you um, decide on buying a particular artwork, you need to make sure that it's uh, basically by the artist and uh, you know, look for signature and also a certificate of authenticity to know that uh, that artwork belongs to that particular artist. Usually artists uh, sign their art um, in front, but it often happens that uh, the signature could be uh, on the back uh, side of canvas or panel, uh, so don't freak out if it's not uh, 
at the front of the painting. Um, you could find it um, at the back of the painting. But if you buy art at the gallery and you don't see the signature, you can uh, ask for it. And uh, usually uh, uh, galleries know where, where it is. If the artwork is unsigned, and it happens sometimes, like if uh, the artist is young, um, he or she may not assign their work at all. And um, as time passes, they may become famous, and uh, unsigned piece is still theirs. So you need to buy it from a uh, blue chip gallery just to make sure that it belongs to uh, that particular artist you're collecting. Today um, not every artist has a gallery representation and it used to be uh, uh, the downside for uh, the artists, they, you know, every artist want, wanted to be uh, at the gallery. Nowadays, it's not quite the case because of the explosion of the internet and uh, the social media. Uh, so there are a lot of artists who uh, run their businesses independently, and uh, if you like the art of that particular artist, you can just contact them di uh, directly, write to them, call them, and uh, you can have a studio visit and uh, see their art in person. But if you know that the artist sells through the gallery, you should contact the gallery owner uh, to buy art. Usually artists are not allowed to sell their art if they have an exclusive uh, you know, contract with the gallery. Such artists don't usually sell their paintings uh, directly. Okay, I want to um, talk about a very important uh, topic, what to look for in, in a painting or, you know, sculpture or whatever that is. And, um, so what professional artists have uh, is different from the rest of the art world basically because um, many artists are hobbyists but they call themselves artists and um, it's sometimes it's difficult to separate between the categories and um, I'm just going to show you what uh, good artists have and what to look for. So the first thing they have is a unique uh, style. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, a realism or abstract or you know something in between. Every artist, every uh, artist that worked on his art and career has a unique style and that means that you can re recognize the name of the artist by looking at his or her artwork. For instance, we all know Dali and um, we can instantly spot his work uh, among everyone else hanging on the wall. That's what you get once you, you see that the artist has a very specific style and subject matter. Uh, for instance, if we look at Kehinda Wiley, all his uh, paintings are very large. They feature black men and women, and um, they refer to a classical tradition, and they're set against um, you know, colorful um, pattern-like backgrounds. The second thing is to look at the level of education. Nowadays it's unclear. Sometimes you can find a great artist who is self-taught and education is irrelevant. 
but a lot of times education plays into the level of artist's work. Also, the third thing that's important is a sales record and a collections list. So, um, artists can provide you with the names of the collectors and um, it's even better if uh, the artist uh, has his work in uh, corporate collections or museums or, or in private collections of some uh, known people or even celebrities. It affects uh, pricing. It's not a prerequisite per se, but I think the collections list gives the artist the authority. The thing is, a lot of times when you just uh, begin collecting and um, let's say you collect an emerging artist, he or she might not have that uh, record, might not have um, the list of corporate collections, let's say, but the artist is so unique that you know that eventually uh, he or she uh, is going to get into, you know, into that list of collections. So it's your decision, it's up to you to decide if you want to collect art based on the collectability of the artist or just the fact that you like the style and the artist so much so uh, that it, it almost doesn't matter. You're just sure that eventually uh, the artist is going to get into uh, the collections. Artists who are serious about uh, their profession, they never give up and they work on their uh, craft and career constantly. Um, a lot of times you see someone saying, I am an artist but I haven't painted like for or five years. This is like a, a no-no for for the artist who does it, uh, you know, day in and day out, uh, there could be extraordinary circumstances where uh, the artist quits for some time. Let's say there is a death in the family and it's just impossible to paint, or some financial, serious financial uh, circumstances that prevent the artist from making art. But as a rule. Uh, professional artists work on their art and career uh, every single day. It's not a hobby, it's not a job, it's not an entertainment. It's part of their nature, it's part of their life and nothing else can break that bond. Professional artists have uh, consistent pricing, um, meaning that their art would trade, um, you know, would sell at a particular price range depending on size and su subject matter and complexity of work. Sometimes it could be the same size, but because the painting itself is so complex in execution, it could cost a lot more. Professional artists are experts in their fields. They have a number of uh, achievements that, that can basically speak for them for themselves. Of, uh, they could be winners of top um, contests or they could have a number of uh, publications. Um, a number of important publications or they could be um, grant recipients. So all those things uh, reflect on artist's uh, career and the you know, seriousness of his or her dedication to the profession. 
So art posters, to buy or not to buy, right? Well, there are two types of uh, art post posters. Um, they could be open edition and limited edition posters. And um, if it's an open edition, it's the cheapest kind. Usually, uh, um, people who buy open edition prints, they can't afford uh, buying the real, you know, the original art. But they want to make a contribution, they want to have art on their wall. And I think it's a great entry point just to uh, develop your sense of style and to show off your personality at home. But uh, if you buy open edition prints, just know that they are not worth much and they have no resale value. If you buy um, a limited edition prints, they must have a signature of an, of an artist and they also must have a number, uh, an edition number um, of every print sold. So, for instance, if the edition is small, let's say it's just uh, 200 prints, and then there would be number 1 of 200, 2 of 200, 3 of 200, and so on. So you know that you are buying the second print out of 200 prints. And uh, limited edition prints might have some value. They have more value if the artist is really known. But if uh, the artist is not famous and it's just a limited edition, because you might not consider buying it as an investment. Limited edition prints uh, have uh, more resale value if uh, they are done by famous artists. Another thing is, we are, uh, here I'm talking about, you know, g prints that, you know, prints that you make, um, you know, digital reproductions. But actually, there is a different type of print um, and it goes back to uh, art history. These are hand-pulled prints, uh, such as lithographs, entailers, uh, you know, silkscreen uh, prints. And uh, those prints can be very valuable because they are done using, you know, the artist's skill completely. It's not digitized, it's not uh, computer-run uh, uh, production. And uh, those uh, lithographs and uh, uh, silk screens, um, they, they have a, a lot more value. And uh, it used to be the first method of uh, make, making multiples. Um, artists such as Rembrandt did a lot of uh, entire printing and it's just a very valuable uh, art form that I think is getting forgotten. These prints may be very, very valuable and if they are done by well-known artists, it's, you can certainly treat it as uh, original artwork. And they also have uh, an edition number and uh, so they have two numbers, uh, first number of the print and the edition number and also the signature of the artist uh, on every print. You know, prints must be uh, nice and clean even on the back of the print and uh, all prints are numbered and signed by the artist. If you find this video valuable, please uh, share it with your friends, comment, like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.